Your voice, your opinion, your community. Fact TV, free speech, protected. everything in our lives, and I know that's easy to say, much harder to do, um, but lately, every time I feel like things are a little bit of a mess, I sit there and I say, okay, he has come through for you so many times. Why is it every time something happens, you doubt? That's that little thing on our shoulder talking to us. We need to ignore it because we know that God always brings things to what's best even if we don't understand what's happening at the time. Um, the next verse that I was given is Psalm 146, 1 and 2. When things are at its worst, we need to praise him. The more we praise him, the more he's present in the storm for us. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. And the beauty of that, people, is as long as we live and we praise God, what do you think we're going to be doing when we go up there to be with him? Then the praise is really going to be intense because not only are we going to be doing it, but we will be doing it with the multitudes that love him. Just imagine what that's going to be like. Our next song is By Faith. Fix our eyes on him, our soul. 
the things of this world. And another verse that I wanted to share with you is Isaiah 40, 31. And I know many of you probably know this one by heart. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. God wants to be in our lives thoroughly and fully. And we might not always understand the direction it's going in, but it is always for the better. And usually when we get to the other side, we are in amazement as far as what he's done because it's greater than what we would have thought for ourselves. Our next song is Walk by Faith. It goes side to side. If you feel like you're losing hope and losing, losing faith, please reach out. Reach out to the church. Reach out to someone that you trust that can help you get through what you're going through. We are not meant to go through things alone. We have God and we have each other. So please reach out. 
we don't want to see any of our sisters or brothers in pain and faltering. So please reach out. We are meant for strength and unity, not for confusion and failure and indecision. Please let God prompt you to have the strength to reach out. We love you. You are one of the body, and the body cannot exist without all its parts. Thank you, Jesus. Excellent choice of songs. I appreciate it. I was thinking while we were worshiping. You've heard the world say, seeing is believing. But the word in Hebrew says, believing is seeing. One of those God opposites. <laughs> Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we've come into this place seeking your face. We welcome your face in this place. For we know, Lord, that you are the source of every answer. You, Lord, have the solution to every situation. Whether it be a circumstance or an illness or a sin that has captured us, Lord, you have remedy even in your hands through the blood of your son, Jesus, who come faithfully to die in our place on that cruel cross at Calvary. How can we express our gratefulness for what you have done for us, your people? You made us. You have made provision for our salvation. You have a home for us in eternity. Moreover, we have an eternity of fellowship with you ahead of us. What a God you are. You are truly an amazing God indeed. We turn this time over to you, Lord, for your use to minister to us through already through the music and now coming up the, the preached word. May we not frivolously waste this time you have offered us. May we make full use of every provision you are offering to us. Lord, in love you have done all these things. And in love, Lord, we turn to you for the solutions that we seek. May your name be glorified every direction, north, south, east, west, high and low. May your name be glorified. We pray these things expecting in Jesus' name. Amen. So today's reading is from John 8, uh, verses 2 through 11. Now early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came to him. And he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said to him, 
Teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. Now Moses, in the law, commanded us that we should not stone. But what do you say? This they said, testing him, that they might have something of which to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger, as though he did not hear. So when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, He who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And those who heard it, being convicted by their conscience, went out one by one, beginning with the oldest, even to the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, Woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Good morning. Tamara's tall. <laughs> Our God moment this morning is store up heavenly treasures. When you spend your life focused on heavenly treasures, instead of filling up on whims that do not last, you are practicing a good pursuit and a wise one. Though you will experience great joy in this life, it represents only a small glimmer of the glorious reality that awaits you in my kingdom. You already know the way to build this kind of fortune. And if you have forgotten, go back to the Gospels. I have laid out everything you need to know in the model of sacrificial love. Choose mercy, and you are choosing to put your hope in my word instead of your own desire for justice. My justice stands forever. Trust me to do what only I can do and follow in my humble lead by leading those who may never do the same in return. Give without thought of whatever you get or whether you will even ever receive it back again. My love is an ever-flowing fountain. Let it flow freely from your life as it does for mine, and I will continually fill you up. The revelation of your eternal treasure will not disappoint you. More than that, you will find the satisfaction of your purpose in me. And here I am, already yours just for the asking. Matthew 6.20 tells us, instead, stockpile heavenly treasures for yourself that cannot be stolen and will never rust, decay, or lose their value. Well, this morning we are privileged, and I just want to say thank you in advance to Sharon, because you know we've been like all over the countryside this month, um, and so time has been of the essence. So I called Sharon up oh, a number of weeks ago and said, "So I plan on being in, uh, you know, Maine one week, followed by Pennsylvania the following week. Not sure how much time I'm going to have to prepare something for Sunday." She's like, "No problem. God's been laying something on me anyway." So uh, she's going to be sharing with us from God's heart this morning, and next week we're going to have the privilege of hearing from Lori. Uh, Palmer, as she's going to be bringing the word to us, as well as an update on what's been going on with Greater Things Ministries and especially their work in the Philippines. You're going to get to see some videos next week uh, of what's been going on there. So come uh, expecting great things uh, as we hear not just what God's doing here, because you know, I mean, sometimes people can look at our church and say, wow, you're kind of a small church. We might be a small church, but we're doing big things, you know, and 
I, or should I say, God is doing big things through us. Uh, and why? Not because we're anything special, just because we're willing to say, God, here we are. Use us somehow, some way. And you know what I find when you pray prayers like that? God is quick to meet you where you're at. And, uh, and God is doing that through us. And so it's so awesome to have uh, those sorts of things happening, to have so many people in our congregation that are gifted pastorally. And uh, as Sharon comes and shares the word of God with us this morning, um, let us hear not just from Sharon, let us hear the word of God as he wants to speak into our hearts today. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Sharon. Not too far. Get over here. You're, you're good. I love you. I love you. No, you haven't been fired. No, that's, that's not happening. No. Uh, but, but Saturday, uh, don't forget that we are having the secure, safety and security seminar here, dealing with how we can keep this a safe place no matter what happens, uh, how to minister to people effectively in a way that will help promote healing and wholeness in people. Uh, and so be a part of that if you're involved, especially if you're a leader. Uh, in any realm, whether it's children's ministry, small groups, pastoral, anything like that, please uh, make every attempt that you can to be here. 10 to 4, if you are planning on coming, please let me or Dottie know, because we do want to get a head count so we know how much food to prepare, because we're going to provide lunch, so you guys don't have to worry about that. But again, 10 to 4, come expecting some pretty cool things. Sharon. Uh, guess I'm rehired again. Well, good morning again. I know it's been a while. <laughs> I'm going to speak this morning a little bit from the Sermon on the Mount and what I call the Golden Rule. Golden Rule. We all know what the Golden Rule is. Right? Everybody knows the golden rule? This is what I'm going to talk about today. And when Jesus spoke his sermon on the mount, he spoke many wonderful lessons for the disciples and those around him to learn and to apply every day. So what is the golden rule? It is do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Sometimes that's really hard to follow. We want everybody to do everything for us, but when it comes for us to take our turn, that's something different. But that's supposed to be sounds pretty simple. But I guess most of you know that it really is not. Some of the many important words that Jesus spoke about in his sermon when he was surrounded by everybody was, do for the other people the same things you want them to do for you. And those were Jesus' words. Such a valuable lesson taught on that day has been brought forward to today, often referred to as, quote, the golden rule. Ah, uh, that golden rule keeps coming up. What does that look like? If something is golden, it must be nice. If we think about salt, it used to make the flavor of something better. Now, when Pastor Tim started talking about that last week in his teaching, I thought, oh, oh I'm going to have to start changing my, my teaching because you don't want to hear the same thing twice. But yay, as you can see, I didn't have to change. Amen. As I was searching online, I found an acronym for SALT. S can be serve others, which is to be there for others, to help others. A, appreciate others, applaud a good effort, encourage those around us. L, love others. That sounds simple, but sometimes it's not. Jesus loves us so much let us love others and treat others kindly. T is treasure others. Value others 
even if we have differences with them or they have it with us. I also discovered, as you know, when you search Google, you discover a lot of stuff, that in numerous other religions, like Hindu or Buddhism, for example, it's written out that on a negative force that says, don't do to people the things that you don't like done to you. I kind of like a positive view of it. It would be a lot easier to follow that advice. That, that way, if we were following what the Buddhists and Hindus believe in, we wouldn't have to do anything at all. We could just be us, and we'd have no problem. The only thing we would have to do is to avoid people. <laughs> that's, that's it, we just avoid people. But I like Jesus' way be better. He stated in a positive way, do unto others. And why do I like that better, you ask? Well, because it requires us to interact with people. And I like people. It requires us to take an action, a positive action, with those around us. Our main verse for today is Matthew 7, 12. So whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them. Now what does a life committed to the golden rule look like? I bet that if you were to walk into any kindergarten or daycare, you would most likely see some form of the golden rule pinned up on a wall somewhere. This is one of the most fundamental truths for a large majority of people, whether you know the Bible or not. It helps us to be nice, polite, and friendly. It may differ with the two-year-old, but they still have golden rules themselves. But really looking at it and studying it, we see that it's actually calling for much more than that. Jesus is teaching us something very radical. Jesus is not teaching us to merely be nice to our neighbor. He's asking us to do much more than that. When you really think about it, how do you want to be treated by other people? I know for myself how I want to be treated. I want to be treated with respect. I want to feel loved and that I matter to them. I want others to be kind to me and to encourage me. I want others to be patient with me, to be gracious, and to be honest with me. Oh, and I think of so many other ways to love me, but I don't think I have the time to just mention all of them here right now since I'm only going to be up here past what Tim said, I think, like 15, 20 minutes, if that. Do you remember how you felt loved when a friend came up and gave you a hug? Felt pretty good, huh? You get that nice, warm feeling. Now, I'm not saying that you should go and hug everyone else. Rather, what I am saying is that you want others to feel that same love you felt when you were hugged in whatever way makes them feel most loved. And in all of that, I want other people to act that way towards me because they actually want to, not because they're being forced to or feel guilty if they do not. No one wants someone to be interacting with him or her in a fake, obligatory way. So in our attempt to rightly understand the golden rule, we must see to it not merely as a set of conduct for us to conform to, 
but our hearts must desire to treat people the way we wish they would desire to treat us. And that, my brothers and sisters, is not easy to do. Jesus explains this well in the book of Matthew in chapter 22, verse 39b. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. And I would assume everybody here really loves themselves. How about that for a command? Ponder just how deeply you really do love yourself. I really hope you do, tremendously. Think about these questions and answers. What do you do when you are hungry? You go get something to eat. What do you do when you are lonely? You go spend time with friends. Pretty simple questions and answers, right? Then use this as your measuring stick of how seriously you should pursue other people's happiness. Let your desire to have something to eat inform your desire to ensure your neighbor has something to eat. Let your longing for companionship and, friend, and friendship inform your desire to ensure your neighbor has friends. Let your passion to having a life that counts and is not wasted compel you into making sure your neighbor's life matters and is not wasted either. A great question to ask yourself whether or not you are abiding by the golden rule is, if everyone else around me were to mirror my morals and behavior, would it flourish? How you please yourself should bring thoughts of how you help others in ways you never thought were possible. So why then is it so hard to follow, since we always try to please ourselves? Some of the greatest influencers in our world today are remembered because of their selfless acts of service for the betterment of the world. Haven't they personified their essence of the golden rule? Well, kind of, sort of, in part, but again, we must look deeper to grasp the gravity, gravity of how difficult it is to abide by this rule. If my life is to be an outward life, which is living for the good of others, that means that I must look down to the depths of my heart and silence any self-fulfillment, self-promotion, or self-indulgence in any way to anyone. In the Sermon of the Mount, Jesus gives several examples of what this looks like. A big one that we are all guilty of, including myself, is judging. Matthew 7, verses 2 and 3. Judge not that you be not judged. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? And what does this mean in how we live our life. It means that if you are following the golden rule, you can never think yourself better than anyone else. This does not mean just you don't say that you are better than others or don't act like you are better than others. It is teaching don't believe that you are better than others. Do you think you don't have struggle with that? I know I do struggle with it. How do you view people who disagree with you? How do you view other people who do think they are better than others and look down on other people? Think about how you really view murderers, racists, terrorists, what's going on in the world today bigots, even anyone who does not agree with you. 
To be obedient to the golden rule is to see us all as equally needy. For the grace of God, all image bearers of God, and all equal in dignity and worth. Who can you reach out to? Matthew 5, verse 45. Here Jesus speaks to the crowd about our enemies. You have heard it said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist the one who is evil. But if anyone slaps you on the cheek, turn to him the other also. And if anyone would sue you and take your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go two miles with him. Give to the one who begs from you and do not refuse the one who would borrow from you. You have heard it said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be sons of your father who is in heaven. This means in order to be obedient to the golden rule, you must drain yourself of all ill will, all hatred, all bitterness for your enemies and desire their good. You must pray for them and long for them to flourish just as much as you long for yourself to flourish. By this time, you're probably asking yourself, oh my gosh, what did she just say? I need to do that? I need to do what? I will repeat, you need to pray for them and long for them to flourish just as much as you long for yourself to flourish. Oh, come on, Sharon, this is too hard for us to do. I know it's extremely hard to do, but it is one of Jesus' commands. How many remember watching an old movie on television called Les Miserables, if I can pronounce it now, Les Miserables? I am going way back, but this is an oldie but goodie. How many remember the scene where the main character, Jean Valjean, has just been released on parole, and he's looking for somewhere warm to sleep, and no one will offer him a room to sleep because he's been branded a dangerous man. Then finally, he finds a church, and the monk in the church invites him in and provides him with food and a warm bed. In the middle of the night, Jean decides to steal as much of the golden, golden church relics as he can and takes off to the nearest town to cash in his stolen goods. A police officer catches him and drags him back to the church and tells the monk, and John was saying that the monk gave him all of the gold as a gift and asked the monk if that was true. Much to John's surprise, the monk says, of course they were a gift to him. But friend, you have forgotten the best pieces. And the monk quickly goes over to grab the large silver candelabra and hands it to Jean and looks at the police officer and tells him that no crime has been committed. Would you be able to react that, react that way if someone broke into your home, stole your most precious items, and then tell them, the police officer, oh no, I gave them to him. I don't think too many would be able to do that. You're probably asking your, yourself, how on earth can we always live like that? Well, Jesus tells us in Matthew 22, verses 36 to 40, just exactly how to do that. Teacher, which is the great commandment of the law? And he said to him, again, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is a great and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. 
On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Love the Lord is the first greatest commandment. Love your neighbor is the second. These are the two nails in the wall upon which the universe hangs. These are from God. Romans 13, 8, verses 10, 8, 8 through 10, excuse me. Owe no one anything except to love each other, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, and you shall not covet. And any other commandment, all summed up in this world, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is fulfilling the law. To love my brother is the fulfillment of law. Any commandment is summed, summed up by love your neighbor as yourself. It almost seems like Jesus is trying to say that loving God and loving people are so similar that they are connected together and to have one means to have the other. So if I truly, really love my neighbor, I love God. And if I love God, I love my neighbor. They are inseparable. And First John will show us why. First John chapter 4, verses 7 and 8, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. If I love my neighbor as I love myself, I love God. That kind of love only comes from God. It is like John is talking about loving other people is a natural consequence of loving God. Because Jesus Christ has pledged himself to us and revealed himself to us, we now have both a model and an energy source to accomplish the golden rule. Be loved. If God is so loved, we also ought to love one another. The model of love now. Jesus gave us the perfect model of the golden rule. He always did to others as he would have them do unto him. Jesus poured himself out endlessly in service of blessing and loving people who mostly did not appreciate love or love him back. Whenever we need to ask ourselves how we should love, someone or anyone else, however difficult it is, we just need to ask ourselves, how did Jesus love us? Now the energy of love is, and I'm guessing you have to be asking yourself by now, how does anyone live like that? It seems impossible to just constantly be pouring yourself out. Well, first off, it is impossible to do it perfectly. No one but Jesus can do that. But because the gospel has secured our communion with God, we now have the source of all joy. So when they serve and love others, helping to point them to God, we can empty ourselves of everything. Well, now, Sharon, if I empty myself of everything, whatever will I have left? I'll have nothing left. No, you will have God, the very fountainhead of all joy and satisfaction. And my friends, he is absolutely enough. And that's the word of God. Amen. Aren't you glad God doesn't just give us commands like that, though? But he also gives us the power to be able to live them out. Because, you know, he couldn't tell us to love people like that if it wasn't possible. Like she said, though, can we do it perfectly? No. 
because we're still us. You know, we're still, we're still broken vessels in a lot of ways, but through Christ, we can do all things, right? Because he is the one that strengthens us. And as we rely on his spirit to be our strength, we'll be able to do that, even when people rub us the wrong way. But have you ever found sometimes, at least for me, it seems easier to love the world like that than it is those that profess Christ? Why is it they get under our skin more sometimes? I think it's because we expect different. I apologize, as you had stated. But you know what the thing is? It comes back again to that verse, that she, one of the verses she started out with. But how dare we look at the plank or, or the speck in somebody else's eye when we've got the log in our own? You know, what's he saying there? We're just as guilty of whatever we think they're guilty of. We've done, in fact, we've probably done 10 times better than they did, yeah. right? So let us, let us reach out with love. And don't let the devil sow disunity and division. Because that's where he specializes, does he not? Yes. Don't we see that happen more often than not? So let us slap him in the face by choosing to love. Amen? Amen. 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 Sandy, would you lead us out with one final song together? And let's plan on standing to our feet if you're able as we sing together. So our last song today is Living by Faith. And uh, yes, it is hard to do what, with what uh, Sharon brought before us with the message. However, it's not hard when we have God on our side. Um, we have to remember that if we let him be a part of our lives, we become more like him. Yeah. And when we're able to do this, what we are talking about today, God's love shines through us. We become what he needs us to become. And Galatians 6.10 says, Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, not just the ones we like, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. A lot of times we let other believers get under our skin because, again, we expect better. But how can we expect to get better when we know in the same position we wouldn't do any better? I hear people all the time say, oh, Adam and Eve messed up everything. We wouldn't have done any better in their position. I still guarantee I would have eaten the apple and then I would have gone, hey, John, you got to taste this. <laughs> so I don't think I would have done any better than they did. We are like children and we decide to do what we're told not to do. And that's a lot of times where we fall short. Let's sing Living by Faith.
this week and do wonderful things in your lives.